Good morning, everybody. This is Deborah with Hello My Garden. And it's Sunday, and I'm in one of my older um, raised beds, and this one is kind of deteriorating, and so the wood needs replacing. You can see, maybe you can see, never sure if I get the image in the picture or not. So, but the voles have invaded this bed, and they're really giving me a lot of trouble. And you can see there's a hole right here. That's a, a vole hole. And they're up in there. So far, they don't seem to really like the peppers. We had put a lot of this clover in there this winter, and I'm not sure if they're eating the clover or what, but they are terrorizing my peppers. Um, in any case, I really need some snakes. So... Unfortunately, in a place like this, when you're living kind of in a suburban, you know, suburban area, and you're around people that aren't, aren't, that don't grow in this sort of manner, they have a tendency to kill the snakes, which is really a bad thing. Any case, that is a vole hole, and there's a lot of them, if you could see. A lot of holes where they're going in there. Um, so my Aunt Carmela... I'm going back over to my kiwis because I wanted to send you the fruit. Uh, I show you the fruit berries, but I also wanted to, uh, she asked a question and I saw it, but I don't have any images of flowers to show, but she asked the difference between the male and the female flowers. And so I don't have an example. So I, I, I'm going to show you in a minute, a crude drawing that I did. And I hope oh, I apologize for the, the poor quality of the drawing, but it was the best I could do. Um, but anyway, here are the berries. We have some berries. So the, so the male was not, um, um, what do you call it? He was, I guess the few little male flowers I got must have worked because I do have some berries. Uh, are they in the image? Uh, hopefully they will not get eaten by anything. I'm probably going to try to get something to, to cover them a few at least. So I at least get a few. Um, see, but those are the berries. Can you see them? And I got a number of them, and they'll get a little bit bigger than this, hopefully, by the time they're ready. Uh, so those are the berries. Let me see. Are they in the picture? Don't know. Uh, more of them. Um, okay, so my little crude drawing, let's put it on the ground here. Okay, so, so again, I apologize. Is it even in the picture? I can't tell. Okay, I hope it is. In any case, <laughs> my crude drawing, and I apologize again. So the male kind of has a flower like this with the little, uh, with the little, what, what do you call them, stamens? Uh, in any case, there's uh, pollen. But in the female, there's one in the, there's a long, there's a long thing out of the piston in the middle. I should have looked up what the scientific terminology for that is, but I didn't, and I apologize. And then there's this, like, star-looking thing coming out of the middle where, where you would put the pollen on. Um, in any case, and I have an acai, which has both, but although the pollen on that is it's like a it's supposed to be called like a perfect flower maybe has both male um the male and the female however they according to what is in the literature the may the pollen on an acai is not fertile there's you're not able to use it on another a female though i'm not sure how that works because it works for itself um in any case but they produce better when there is a male so anyway, so I apologize for the quality, but I, I was hoping that could kind of give you an idea of what the difference between a male and female flower is. I'm no artist. So <laughs> again, that was the best I could do. Um, okay. So, uh, and here are my kiwis. And the voles are really, really attacking them pretty badly, I think. They're attacking this ground under here. And it may just be because they feel protected. So here's a hole right there. Um, and it's really soft. Like I was standing 
my little I have a little step stool to try to when I was trying to pollinate the flowers and the step stool I kept falling because it kept the ground was so soft um, because it's so dug up by the voles under here and I kept falling through because of their tunnels um, I had to put bricks down finally so I could put the put the step stool on them and and uh, get up there but I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm you know I'm, I'm vegan I don't like to do anything to them I don't kill them um, I just kind of need nature to take its course but uh, unfortunately man has changed nature so it doesn't work properly there is not predators here um, in any case, um, we also have, as of late, been overrun by rabbits. And in the past, our rabbits don't damage our crops really to the extent that it affects us. But now they are because there's so many of them. And again, because I don't do anything to them, they kind of overrun and they they ignore us when we come up and chase them out of the beds. They kind of they they pop, hop a little ways, but not very far because they know we're not going to do anything to them. They're like pets. Um, and they're, they're adorable, they're so cute, but they are getting to be starting to eat other things. Um, anyway, so here's the kiwis, and um, they're doing pretty well, other than they're, you know, I know that they're getting attacked and they would probably be much more lush if they didn't have that, um, uh, that kind of damage. So, and the voles eat their roots. So there's a difference between moles and voles for any of you that don't know. So moles are little creatures that are sort of blind and they, they, they crawl around under and they create tunnels and stuff and they eat bugs. But voles are like little mice with shorter tails, little short tails. And they will go under and tunnel under as well. And actually many people say they actually use the mole tunnels, but I'm pretty sure they can tunnel themselves and they are the damaging ones and they eat plant roots and plant trees and uh the, and bark and that kind of stuff they like to stay under the ground because you know that keeps them safe from certain predators like uh you know foxes and cats and uh, hawks and stuff and owls but they they do come up a little bit um in any case so up oh, more berries i don't know if you can see them because it's dark under here um, anyway, so these are cattle panel trellises that I had put up for them, for these kiwis. Ah, more berries. See, I hope they're in the picture. Actually, if you kind of look at the end there, that's kind of like the thing that I was trying to put in the picture. That little, that little, this little thing right there from the flower. Okay, so, and I wanted to say thank you to those of you, I know it works every time, every time somehow I ask you for rain, you send it to me. So we got about almost two inches of rain over a course of a week, uh, this past week, and it was really, really needed, and I do appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your, you, uh, maybe my Aunt Cremella had a lot to do with that, I don't know. I assume so. I think she's my major uh, viewer. I have many viewers. Um, and so I do appreciate that. Uh, any of the rain you can send us uh, would be greatly appreciated. You know, typically they say you need about an inch a week. And, uh, and, and here in the south, it gets super, super hot and humid in the summer and, and, and can be dry. Um, so that would be perfect as about a week. Uh, an inch a week so any you could send we we'd be appreciated but whenever I ask you some some reason however you want to explain it I get some so far knock on wood here's our blueberries we're gonna have to cover these two because even so they're not ripe yet but those the animals the rabbits whatever the birds are they're eating them you can see there's a bunch gone right there already um, so they're eating them and we haven't had this much uh, problem with animals before in the past even though they were here but this year it's been, you know, I guess every year you have your challenges. Uh, it seems to be increasing so much in the first couple of years when you, I guess when we, when we um, have no pesticides and, you know, we did everything organic and natural. 
Um, the first couple years, the, the, the problem was mostly bugs. So now it's getting to be, I think, the, the creatures are coming and uh, doing their, their share. So we, we try to figure out ways to handle that in a natural manner and hopefully we can survive and maybe just increasing what we have here, which was a plan always is to increase what we have and make it more of a natural. It'll never be totally natural because a total natural environment is more like a forest. Um, and it'll never be like that, but we'll get it as close to possible um, as possible to that sort of balance the way nature planned it or um, if you want to say the being above, you know, God, however you want to talk about that. But the natural environment should really be forestry, um, forest, jungle, whatever. So we do the best that we can and uh, mimic the natural environment as much as possible so that there is a balance. In any case, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. I hope uh, hope y'all are doing good. I kind of maybe I'll bring you over here a little bit to my squash or my pumpkin that's starting to grow. So this this pumpkin I planted. Um, there's a few tomatoes that are volunteer. I did not plant that tomato. That's a volunteer, and that's the beautiful thing about doing this kind of garden the way we do we do is that there's a lot of volunteers. In fact, a couple years we didn't even plant pumpkins because they came up um, and I do have some coming up so there's one the one I planted there there's one next to it that I did not plant and it's coming up uh, unfortunately a bunny I had a roselle right here oh, and a roselle here and it snapped it in half and it's a vole it's a vole there's a vole hole and then it bit there was another pumpkin here and it bit one leaf off yesterday so it's a vole. Here's another pumpkin that's coming up. Um, and that's not, that's a volunteer. That's a watermelon I planted over there. But this right here is, is a volunteer. I didn't plant that. And this is motherwort. And motherwort is sort of aggressive in that all these seeds will start. They're very spiky hard seeds. And they will grow wherever those seeds, seeds drop. So you could say they're sort of aggressive in that manner. However, the bees and the pollinators love it. So it's worth just to grow just for that reason. Um, it's sort of early. No, nah, it's not really early, but usually it's totally covered. Um, and I'm sure later by the afternoon it will be totally covered, but there still are a number of bees on there. If you, there's a little bee right there. Uh, but it's usually totally, totally completely covered by them. So they really love it. In any case, um, I will talk to you next time. And I hope you guys have a great Sunday.